bet we can find a special treat today at Pai R. Look at these beautiful little pastries. Aren't they gorgeous? And they're delicious too. Well, I know that chocolate dome, that's called Louvre. It's a chocolate mousse inside and that beautiful How are you? cake there. Uh, macaron, right, that's another you. possibility. Thayer has beautiful macaron. Sorbet, mm, maybe, it's a thought. Or how about chocolate? Uh, a handmade chocolate, that's a possibility. Hmm. At Maison Kaiser, there are a lot of other possibilities. Also gorgeous and delicious. Ooh, that apricot uh, frangipan tart looks beautiful. And the little mini uh, St. Honoré. Oh, they're all beautiful. Ooh, the pistachio eclair. Those raspberries are gorgeous. I'm not so sure about that white snowy thing. Coconut? I don't know. Lots of possibilities here. Caramel. Mm. Hi everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Every now and then we all get a craving for a very special treat. And any one of these beautiful selections that we've seen at Payar, uh, Matisserie Payar, or at uh, Maison Kaiser, any one of those could fit the bill. And it's fun to look at them, and it's wonderful that uh, somebody else made them for us, and we're just, you know, all ready to dive in. But every now and then, it's nice to make something ourselves, and I think it needs to be chocolate. And so, how about a brownie? How about a wonderful brownie? It's rich, it's luscious, it's chocolatey. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make my favorite brownie, flavored with espresso and pecans. I think it's absolutely the best. And one of the great things about it is that, you know, it's easy to make. Um, these brownies make wonderful gifts. So, you know, when you need a gift, you know, why not uh, make up a batch and uh, gift your friends and loved ones and gift yourself while you're at it. And uh, also, these brownies will keep very nicely indeed for months in the freezer. So you can have them available in case of emergencies. So, I think this is a really nice way to go. So if you'll come back to the kitchen with me, I'll show you how it's done. Thanks, everybody. So, first off, you want to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure that you have a rack in the middle, in the middle position of the oven. Then for our pan prep, this is a uh, 9 by 13 pan. Notice this one is totally square, all those nice square corners, so that we'll be able to use every last bit of our beautiful brownies. Uh, I have a, this is a magic line pan, so uh, um, look for magic line. That's absolutely your uh, best choice for this and for uh, those kinds of cakes too. And uh, so let's, um, uh, let's get this prepped. I'm just using some spray. Uh, I happen to have a, uh, as you can see, a non-stick silicone mat that I'm lining the pan with. If you don't have that handy, then just cut a piece of parchment to fit. So once your uh, pan is prepped, your oven's preheated, now uh, choose a big mixing bowl. This is what we're going to blend everything in at the end. Uh, we've got uh, two sticks of butter, that's eight ounces of unsalted butter. Um, softened. Uh, if it's not uh, at room temperature, then be sure to um, slice it up with a knife. 
Uh, so add the butter to the bowl and then our chocolate. So we need some good unsweetened chocolate. I think seven ounces is perfect for this. Uh, this one happens to be Ghirardelli, which I think uh, is a, a great choice for unsweetened chocolate. And so chop that up so it will melt quickly and add it to the butter. Now put your pan, uh, your uh, mixing bowl, put it uh, over hot water and um, then uh, start to stir it over the hot water and, uh, and it will begin to melt. So you can just set that aside, uh, go back to it every now and then and stir until it's about um, well, three quarters of the way melted. We'll come back to that in a minute. Meanwhile, we're gonna do some other things. We have one cup of all-purpose flour, unbleached all-purpose flour, to which we are adding uh, a half teaspoon of baking powder and about a teaspoon of kosher salt. Uh, now this is a great place to use other kinds of flour other than wheat flour. So if you need a gluten-free brownie, great. Um, just use, you know, use a, a, a gluten-free uh, all-purpose flour mix, something like uh, the one that um, Bob's Red Mill makes, which is my favorite. And we've got uh, two cups or one pound of granulated sugar to which we will add four uh, large eggs. And uh, notice I'm tapping the eggs on the flat inside of the bowl, not on the edge, which, which uh, will encourage more uh, bits of shell. So flat surface is better. We need about two teaspoons of vanilla and about a tablespoon of um, instant espresso or another kind of instant coffee will work as well. So whisk that up with your whisk. That's the second use for the whisk now. And uh, when that's um, uh, fairly well combined, then you want to give it one minute, one full minute of whisking. That's important. Uh, no more than that. Just that full minute, and it will get one shade lighter in color, but it'll still be nice and granular. Okay, so now you can check in on your um, chocolate. You can see this hasn't quite gotten there yet. All the butter's melted, of course, but uh, we're not quite at 75, 80% on the chocolate yet. So we're gonna stir that a bit longer. Um, it uh, can come off the heat at this point, though, and the uh, heat that it's retaining will be enough to finish the melting process. So stir that often until the chocolate is 100% melted and uh, check the temperature of the chocolate and butter mixture. Use your wrist. That's your best uh, uh, thermometer and uh, it should feel uh, warm. Just, just warm is what we're looking for. So if it's hotter than that then just keep stirring until it cools off and if it's too cool to keep melting the chocolate then put it back on the hot water for a little bit. That's fine too. So we want the chocolate completely melted into the butter mixture uh, and we want the uh, chocolate butter mixture to be slightly warm. That's our ideal. And when we've got that then we're ready to Put this together. Okay, now we got it. So go ahead and um, go ahead and add your sugar and egg mixture with the flavorings. Get that all in there and use your rubber spatula to just blend that into the chocolate mixture. It'll go right in as soon as it's smooth. You're all set, then it's time to add the flour. So just give that a few turns with your spatula until all the flour disappears. And uh, that's it. That's our mixture. Make sure it's combined. Make sure you don't have any extra chocolate at the edges of the bowl or anything like that. Then scrape it into your prepared pan and um, don't waste any. 
And don't worry too much about how you spread it out in the pan. It'll kind of take care of itself. It'll spread out itself pretty much. So uh, then we're going to uh, add our pecans on the top. Uh, I think you need probably about uh, well, close to two cups, a cup and a half to two cups of pretty uh, pecan halves. And you could use walnuts if you wanted to or uh, most any other nut will do the job. But I like pecans best of all, especially with the coffee and um, that uh, nice uh, vanilla flavor. So get those all arranged and get that in your preheated oven. You can come back and check on this in like maybe about, about 25 minutes or so when it's all um, puffed up. Use a pick to check it. Um, so insert that and then see uh, what you get with the pick. Now if you look at this pick I think you can see pretty well. I think the camera focused pretty well. See we've got some uh, gooey chocolate mixture on there so this is not quite there yet. Actually you could take it out but it would be super fudgy. And uh, I think this needs probably meh, about three more minutes. Uh, looked a little bit too too soft to me so give it a try don't let it over bake that's really important because um, we have to get the brownies out of the oven when there's still a few moist crumbs on our pick perfect okay see that a few moist crumbs I think I got a pretty good focus on that so you can see it and uh, better too soft than too hard so um, when your brownies have cooled, uh, not uh, they don't have to be room temperature yet, but just let them cool a bit. Then you can unmold them, um, and uh, then uh, turn turn it back up onto the uh, bottom of your baking pan. That's the easiest way to um, just reverse it back onto the bottom of the baking pan. Uh, wrap it up and uh, get it in the fridge. So wrap it up uh, very tightly with plastic wrap or, and or foil and then get it in the fridge to chill really well and then it'll be very easy to cut into beautiful squares or rectangles. So those are Bruce's Pecan Espresso Brownies. I hope you like them. I adore them. The recipe is at brucebeckinthekitchen.com. I hope you'll drop in. I hope you'll say hello. Always love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me today.